What's up YouTube, Redbeard's Garage, and welcome back to another video. Today we're finally going to be fixing up the Murray Explorer. Well, we got the uh, the Murray Explorer in the garage today. I'm gonna look it over, find out what it needs because it's a pretty big slouch of a go-kart. We barely rode it the day we bought it and uh, noticed a few things was pretty crappy on it. Number one, they're using a lawnmower belt on the torque converter. I've seen people do this plenty of times here in town. They'll go down to Napa and they'll just take their belt size and just buy a standard lawnmower uh, belt. Completely different style belt. A torque converter uses, you know, I mean, they're night and day difference. But I'll show you the belt and show you this engine, which is uh, the brand of this engine is Liquid Combusting Technology, LCT, Liquid Combusting Technology, otherwise known as a gasoline engine, but that's their brand. So you can see that uh, lawnmower belt right there, a uh, really classy setup. It's got this big bulky muffler on it that we're going to be pulling off. Of course, we'll put the Go Power Sports Performance Kit on it with an air filter and whatnot. Probably gonna remove the governor. I'm gonna, it looks like this whole jack shaft assembly, like you bolt the engine down solid to this to this plate and then the whole setup slides forward and back for chain tension. So I'm thinking, I don't have a torque converter belt laying around for that style torque converter. That's kind of a, you know, a specialty belt. And of course I'm gonna have to order something. So what I'm gonna do is pull this whole rear section off and then put a standard torque converter on that engine and go ahead and remove that governor and check this engine out a little bit. Like I said, it's liquid combusting technology or something like that. There's the brand 208 series, which is, you know, 208 cc's. It's got a little spec sheet right there. It says it's nine foot pounds of torque. She's a hoss. So uh, going to put those V treads also on this car. I think that'll look pretty sweet. So we'll go ahead and throw the front tires on just see what that looks like okay bearing came out with that one but it does look like someone's kept this thing greased that looks like really new grease the guy I got this from I think he said he worked maintenance at a factory so maybe he kept this thing in check for some reason this tire ever since I got it had a slow leak uh, don't really know why. I mean, it should be beating just fine. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to check that out. I need to hook up my air compressor too. Because we are getting concrete work done, so we had to uninstall my compressor out back. This is going to look pretty sweet. Uh, I do also need to run... Well, the wires actually already ran for the kill switch, but it has a key style kill switch. And of course I didn't get the key for it. Oh yeah. So next we're going to start pulling the engine on the back of this thing. Look at that, wearing a hat finally. Got tired of fixing my hair like a woman. Got all those bolts out. Now we can take this uh, liquid technology, what was it, liquid combusting technology engine off. Just cut that belt off. That's trash for sure. Now uh, I think it's just unhooked the throttle cable and we can pull this thing off. We gotta pull this little heat shield off this muffler. Okay different size uh, bolts. Come on, baby. Well, that wasn't that bad. So what I'm done is pulling the exhaust off so I can get to the throttle set up on this hoss. This motor is filthy though. Like it's got corrosion all over it. Probably from getting rained on for 27 years. Sorry if you're getting a lot of noise in the background. I don't like to run my AC uh, when I'm filming, but let's face it i'm fat it's hot i'm sweaty and i'd rather not be oh gosh yeah all the bolts are actually out of the engine 
And then there's that, uh, that muffler. I had an exhaust gasket, but just like a real flimsy metal one. And it looks like it has been leaking. The throttle hold down is an Allen head on this one. And also the little throttle eyelet is like an eight millimeter and may even be smaller than that. It's pretty tiny. Let's see if an eight fits and it does. But how on earth am I gonna keep that thing still? That's junky. Let's see if we can hold this mother still. We can take this hoss off. I guess that's okay. There's the uh, throttle cable off. So everything should be be off, and this thing should be ready to pull. Bam! Got it. So I was hoping once I got the engine off, this would kind of unbolt off, but it actually it's already once you take the engine off, it's already unbolted. So now. I can pull these wires out and get rid of this torque converter assembly. It's, it's a true uh, comet though. That's pretty nice. So there you can see we have a normal engine plate that was under that engine. So now I should be able to take the axle off so I can flip this sprocket on the opposite side. Let's hope that isn't a son of a gun. I'm afraid it might be, but who knows. Yeah, it looks like four bolts and I can drop this axle out of the way. We're going to need a new chain and everything on it. I'm probably going to keep that sprocket though. It looks to be in pretty decent shape. We'll check it out better when we get everything pulled off. So now we'll remove this old axle. Now from the looks of this tire, like the rust that's in there, this is probably going to be a pain to get out. So what I have determined on this is the tires and wheels are freaking seized like a mother. Then when I started looking at the axle, it's only keyed so far on each side. It's got like a six inch keyway on each side. So that's not going to work because I'm going to need the sprocket to ride right about there. So what I'm going to do is I've already taken the bolts off these back uh, guards. This just pretty much protects the, the sprocket and stuff. I'm going to take the front bolts off and I'm just going to drop the whole entire axle and put everything new on it. There's no use in trying to use this junk when it's it's uh, pretty crappy, to be honest. So uh, let's get all this junk pulled off. After beating on this thing, prying on it, doing everything I can, I cannot get nothing to move. Everything's seized on like crazy. I can't. All I need to do is get that axle bearing over just a quarter of an inch and this axle would come out. But I can't get them to move whatsoever. So Now that is the way you get a stubborn axle off. Like I said, I wasn't going to use this axle, so uh, it was trash anyways. So now I can get a hammer in there and try to beat this bearing back and take this freaking axle off so we can continue on this build. This had a two flange axle bearing on it and all my flanges are three, three bolt flange. So I have drilled these holes out and I need to do the other side now. I already have them marked and I have punched the holes probably going to put a third bearing on in the center because we're pretty rough on things and I don't want to bend a brand new axle so I'll probably weld a flange hanging down from this uh, so now I just got to dress my axle out and uh, go ahead and bolt it up on there So I'm gonna strip this thing down now. That torque converter was rough. See that crap sticking out of there? You should always keep your uh, torque converters clean because it'll extend the life of them. 
son of a gun. Got the other, look how bad. There's supposed to be a brass bushing on here and that helps from the go-kart wanting to take off when you're sitting still. And that thing is chewed up like crazy. This thing burnt. Let's check out in the uh, air box, see how bad it is, which it isn't actually that bad. Yeah, it's a lot cleaner than I thought. I do like how this fuel tank has a shut off. That's one thing I think Predators should have is a fuel shut off because when you take this junk off, you just pour gas everywhere unless you clamp this shut with a pair of vice grips. So now I'm going to drain all the oil out of this thing and the gas out of the carb and uh, start removing the governor. That mother is on there so well, the bearing actually, the bearing actually stuck to the crank. I'm gonna take a little piece of sandpaper and sand the shaft right there so this bearing will slide out and I can actually reuse it. Got it. So now I'm gonna do the normal process of taking out the governor. I gotta remove the, the gas tank to get to the arm that's up top. Tap all the holes. Uh, this one does not have an oil sensor because it was originally a go-kart engine anyway, so we don't have to mess with the oil sensor. We're just gonna remove the gear inside and that arm, tap that top hole, and get that governor out of there. So a couple of pretty neat things about this engine is it was designed to be a go-kart engine, so you have a top fill oil plug right there, which is pretty awesome. And then this oil drain, or this oil fill is actually just like fake. It goes in there and is factory like casted and blocked off. So that's pretty cool. And I get a lot of crap about me taking out the oil sensors all the time. Now, for those that don't know, an oil sensor is, it's made for like, if you have these engines on a generator or a pressure washer, pressure washers are real tipsy. They can tip over real easy. And if you tip it over, you don't want to run it like that. So there's normally an oil sensor going through the block right there. And it goes down to a little box. And when that happens, it would shut the engine off. On a go-kart, you do not want that because just bouncing around on an off-road go-kart will actually shut the engine off. So you can see this go-kart engine factory did not come with an oil sensor. So that tells you right there that you do not need that on a go-kart. But we have did the governor removal. I just need to get a bolt to uh, plug this hole off. I probably have one somewheres. And then I put my old valve cover off the chopper and put me a breather right here. A lot of people also ask me what this is for. And this is just left a PCV valve vent, uh, the extra gases out of the um, valve cover. So now all we have to do is jet that old original carb. I already got 18 pound valve springs and I set the lash to 0 .003. So um, everything's ready other than cleaning and jetting that carb and then putting the air filter adapter on. And I'm waiting to put the header on until the motor's back on the go-kart just to make sure it clears the frame. We may have to make a custom header, but uh, hopefully not. Now I can throw the gas tank back on once I put a screw in that uh, hole where the governor used to run. Also, I need to bolt up the torque converter. All right, so I was about to put this car back on and I noticed that the studs wasn't long enough. This is a common problem with uh, these older style engines. The Predators have the longer studs on it, but sometimes you need to swap these out. These have some really old gaskets. So we are gonna replace the gaskets as well while we're doing this. This one actually ripped. Then I can use the original two nuts that was on the carb. Let's go ahead and put one on there. Go ahead and back another one right up against it using two wrenches. So I'm sure I've showed this process in the past, but you just tighten two nuts up against each other to get studs out. And as you can see, the stud is threading out. Actually really easy for this old of an engine. Now that we have that, we can go ahead and loosen our nuts to use on the other stud. And luckily I keep spare, the longer spare studs in my garage because we do build a lot of go-karts. And the reason you need these longer studs is because uh, the Go Power Sports air filter adapter uh, is kind of thick. 
and this is like I said this isn't a problem on a Predator but uh, usually Honda GX 200s and any older clone engine uh, you'll need to do this so that axle sucked putting on by myself that's for sure but everything's lined up there's five inches of spacing on each side in between the the tires in the frame now the engine I'm gonna to have to to make a little riser for it the bolt holes will not line up you can kind of see right there how it's staggered with the uh, with the opening under the engine but uh, I can do just like I did on the 670 just take some square tubing and cut it to length drill the holes in it and uh, that'll be fine to put up under it does look a hundred times better with that engine with the you know air filter and the torque converter and everything it's going to look a hundred times better in those v treads also made a huge difference i can only get back so far in this garage um, that's going to change soon but uh, we'll talk about that later now i just got to also weld this axle hanger uh, it's actually upside down right now uh, you know i'm putting a third axle hanger just like the 670 and i'm going to have to notch the frame a little bit so this bolt right here will be able to clear but we can weld that up it'll just give that axle a little bit more support and we'll eventually be done full suspension on this go-kart so uh, this was a suspension build i was talking about so you know i want that to be strong and not have to mess with it later so i'll get those spacers cut and we'll bolt this thing up and see what this thing feels like okay so i got those spacers cut those are one inch square tubing with uh eight one eighth inch thick and then i have this flange ready to be welded this axle hanger i'm just going to do a bead across the top and then what little bit I can get on the sides right there. I'm gonna do some ears later when we pull this thing apart, but for now that'll be plenty. It ain't like uh, we're gonna be beating on this thing too bad. Probably will though. And I do have oil in the engine. I made that mistake a time or two. I do not recommend it. I like this frame a lot though. The uh, Skittles I never did really mess with, which if you've been watching the channel for a while, oh gosh, uh, you would have seen that Sk Skittles is the same, the same frame. And what do you know it? The bolts I bought aren't long enough. Hmm. I was thinking two inches right, but I was wrong. Yeah, it looks like I'm gonna be putting the bolts in from the bottom no it won't because those are too big okay plan z <laughs> if i had four of those that would work oh shut my mouth this cannot be happening pretty sure got them got them and i've said this in previous videos always use stover nuts is it focusing mm -hmm. oh gosh see how that last thread has been punched in a uh, in a press so it's ovaled a little bit uh that is an all-metal lock nut and they're freaking handy that's for sure they'll never vibrate loose on you ever oh gosh it's been a long time since uh since i've drove an off-road 212 i mean ever since aubrey's old go-kart remember that thing the very first one yeah the oh yeah that's been a long time well and the widowmaker this is pretty much the widowmaker yeah widowmaker is better but that's what this is uh resembling resembling yeah Resemble. <laughs> wasn't ever no english major <laughs> measured it out he wants to help when it's convenient. Give him 10 minutes, he'll get mad and leave. Me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, mad? You normally do. Nothing mad. Need some 40 chain. Got some 40 chain. Right here, brand new box. Ooh, bam. There's the master. Let me grab my favorite chain pliers. I wouldn't care living if I didn't own these things. See how they're flat nosed and they're small. These are perfect for chain. I lost these things for like a month and I was like, I know I always keep up my tools. It's on top of the garage door motor. 
I fixed a, a tension the chain on my garage door motor. Left them up there. That's a random spot. Yeah, and I didn't find them. The guy who came to look at my garage door was up there messing around on it. And he hands them down to me and says, you lose these? This is my least favorite part of a go-kart is messing with chains. Maybe I've had so much bad luck throwing the freaking things and not keeping them tensioned. It's no big deal putting chain on. Like one of the easiest things, it's always a pain to me. If you ever need a chain break, links are in the description. These are the handiest. I used to do this with a freaking little punch in my vise. I do not miss those days. This is like living in luxury right here. Don't forget, new shirts, rbgcarts.com. They'll make you feel nice. They'll make you look nice. They yeah. are super soft. You'll probably get a raise at work. That's not a guarantee, but I guarantee it. And you always want to put your tensioners or your your master link uh, trailing. So you want the open end back. So if your chain's running, you know, counterclockwise, you want the tail, the open end pointing back. Bam. Okay. Look, evil can evil. He's about to come out of the river. He's getting brave. He's going downhill instead of uphill now. Oh, and he's standing up. Just about hit the other guy. So. I got this Go Power Sports header. It actually fits like perfect. Look at that. See that? The little gap. And then I cut some off so the muffler will be like a little stinger coming out the back. That's gonna look nice. Let me grab a wrench. Probably. I got the governor way. I mean, it's governor down on that bad boy. I tell you, I've been working on this thing all day, and she's done. Hopefully, the chain's tensioned. I put that ex extra axle flange on, and this Go Power Sports header actually just clears this frame, which worked out perfect. So last night I pulled and pulled on the Murray and could not get the thing started. I pulled the coil pack off, sanded the flywheel on the coil pack and re-gapped the, the coil pack. I know people always tell me the, the right gap. I think it's like 30 thousandths, I believe, is what you're supposed to gap the coil. But I always use a business card. It always worked for my dad uh, back when I was growing up and he worked on lawnmowers. So um, it works fine for me. If I'm building an engine like I just built this uh, engine with the billet rod, billet flywheel, mod 2 cam. 18 pound valve springs all that stuff if i do a really nice build then of course i'm going to gap it right but on something like this it, a business card is going to work fine so i re-gapped it and everything still no fire which blew my mind i was like it's got a brand new spark plug in it there's no excuse for this i even put the old spark plug in it couldn't get any fire this engine is really strange if you notice on the front of the motor there's this box uh, i thought i didn't know what it was you know the the ground wire coming from the cool that you would normally run to a toggle switch uh, to kill the engine ran into it and then you hook the kill switch up to it so I thought it was maybe I, I didn't know I was just like I'm getting rid of this because I've never seen another engine use it so you know it's the same cool pack setup as a normal go-kart I don't know what it is if you know what it is put it in the comment section below but uh, it wouldn't let the thing start I've never seen it before I'll show you real quick there it is with the green wire beside of it i don't know what it is like i said if you know let me know uh, in the comment section below this is a uh, a little bit weird of an engine this uh, liquid combustion technology it's a honda clone is all it is and i found some threads about them it is a u.s owned company uh, of course they're made in china but u.s owned company and everything it's just very strange how that box would not let it start but she starts and runs now runs awesome uh, I really like this go-kart for some reason. It's even better than Widowmaker was. 
it has more power which is strange because i did the same exact performance parts and it's pretty much the same motor but same more power than the widowmaker had and it for being a rigid frame it rides better than widowmaker but the only thing we have left to do is i have this bucket seat that's for 150 cc go-kart uh, if you notice that's a lawnmower seat sitting on top of the old frame and that old frame is actually rusted out so i'm gonna have to unbolt that old frame and probably weld a bracket in for this seat to bolt up to so uh, I'm going to get that done off camera and then we're going to take this thing for a ride. Stage one to the Murray build. I think it turned out pretty good for stage one. Beat you to death just like the Widowmaker, but not as bad for some reason as the Widowmaker. Maybe I'm not remembering it the same. Yeah, she has a little bit of suspension in the front, the little springs under the little steering knuckles, but that, that's really no help. Let me know what you think of this Haas in the uh, comment section below. Sorry the video's so long it's a lot of information i didn't want to cut out the video seemed like it was good so yeah don't forget to go to go power sports and use that discount code redbeard to save 10 percent on all your go-kart needs make sure to go to our social media and give us a like and follow instagram snapchat and facebook and uh yeah our website's open you can go to rbgcars.com get this shirt and the other hat i've been wearing this hat because i don't want to get my new one all dirty but i'll start wearing it get off my back yeah, let me know what you think of this go-kart. What would you like to see done to it? It's pretty good. I don't miss the 212s as an off-road go-kart, that's for sure. Because when I really get it in a strain, like up a hill or something, you can really feel the engine bog down. But it turned out pretty good with uh, all the parts I had laying around. Thank you for watching, and always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.